Okay, well, we are back with another episode. It's uh, been way too long. How, how long would you say? Uh, it's About been a six few inches? Well, that too. Okay. But, uh, two months, three months? At least, yeah. Um, well, okay. W- when did you go to M3? May. M3 was the beginning of May, yeah. And we didn't... It was definitely before then. We haven't yeah. done any since. So, yeah. So, yeah. At least a, at least a good few months. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I mean, well, way overdue. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, what we're going to do is new beers, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you've got... This is like a, an all-you episode. Yeah, all about me. Yeah. All about you. Uh, your vacation... And, uh, Two vacations since the last time we did this, yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Your, your baseball trips and mm-hmm. uh, all the beers that you had and so many beers. Other, other and then I'm s- such an alky. <laughs> yeah. Hello. <laughs> I mean, why? Why else would you do a, a a beer podcast? Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, you're not going to have... Not that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to have somebody do a beer co- a yeah. beer podcast and not drink beer. Speaking of know. drinking beer, let's start off with one. Yeah, I, uh, I need one. Did you hear that? He really gets off on this, folks. <laughs> he really does. Like he says, what oh, I, I, I have to open it live on air. Like is, uh, we can just open it right before. You're like, no, I, I have to do it right into yeah, the microphone. I have to do it he on gets, the microphone. You get great pleasure from doing that. I sure do. Um, so, would you like to uh, say what beer that is? It is. What is it called? Wow, the font on that is so. All right, I can't old, even read it. <laughs> all right, old man. Yeah. This is called Blacklight Syndicate. It's a double IPA, which means it's probably going to be at least a 7.5. Yeah. Um, let's see. Should be on there somewhere. 8.3. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Wow. And uh, this is from Fargo, North Dakota, because it's uh, Drecker Fargo Nordak Brewing Company. Yeah. Uh, which we've never had any of their beers before. No, first time. And you got this from 595, yes, right? Yes, they had it in their cooler, and I got a couple of four-packs to take with me home. Okay. That's one of them. And uh, supposedly it has, um, I don't know what spelt is, hmm. um, but it also has oats and cardamom, but spelt. I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah. Um, and then it has... Three different types of hops, and then it also has a uh, a house. Also, it, it's a basic house yeast uh, for IPAs. Okay. So it's like nothing special in the yeast department, but um, kind of interesting to uh, check this out. Yeah. And um, any any kind of a nose on this? Typical hazy Actually, IPA. It, yeah. it, more than like a standard IPA, right? Uh, actually, has something of a nose that goes down smooth. I like this one. Yeah, that is actually kind of nice. Yeah. Um. Which, actually, any beer is great right now because of what are we 105 right now outside? Yeah. Um, so yeah, any beer helps with the heat that we're having, but, uh, yeah, a, uh, a really good summer beer and we are going to uh, check in in on our untapped. Yep. And there it is. Blacklight Syndicate by Drecker Brewing Company. I'm going to give this four, two, five. I like this one quite a bit. Mm. Taster. I would say, for me, I like a, f- a four. Okay. And, uh, oh, a taster. Yes. Since uh, we're sharing the beer. And... And I got Brewery Pioneer level 47. Yeah, so that's one of the things with doing check-ins on Untapped is you earn 
many different badges, mm -hmm. uh, whether you're doing a um, certain type of beer or even yeah. lo locations. Yep, all kinds yeah. of stuff, yeah. And uh, we've barely, excuse me, we've barely scratched all the different places that we can have a beer. I know. Because <laughs> I was looking uh, yesterday, and uh, there's a badge that you can have having a beer at the zoo. And it's like, wow. <laughs> unless, because we don't really have a, a zoo here. Not really. It's, yeah. Kind of do, but it's not worth going to. No. Yeah. But th they actually have anywhere that you can get a beer is you can basically get a badge mm -hmm. for that location. Right. So maybe in due time that we yeah. can try to get all these badges, but it's. We'll never get them all. No. Won't live God, enough no. years for that. Yeah. <laughs> so. But it's fun to get new badges. Yeah, it is. Uh, it, it really is. Um, now, did you get a notification for a. Silver State Brew Fest here in Las Vegas. I did not. Um, uh, uh, check Evan, it says check Evan Bright. Um, I don't know, but with my with my job, different days off. Yeah. It, uh, oh, it's by Pub Three Six Five. Okay. So interesting. Yeah, we've been there a handful of times. Yes. <clears throat> All right. Um, after I toast you. Well, what we're going to do is, again, this is an all-you episode because okay. you're just going to talk about everywhere that you went, everywhere uh, that you did. And uh, afterwards, we'll talk about our... We, uh, we went to 595 separately for mm -hmm. their five-year anniversary. Yeah. So... Yeah, we can talk about that too. Yeah. So we can do that later on. Uh, just get the, the main stuff out of the way. And... Uh, your first trip in May, right? Yes, we left early May. I think we left on a Monday morning. Now, you say we. It wasn't us. Oh, Todd. Yeah. Yeah, my friend Todd. What we'll use his name as Todd. No, That's I'm his kidding. name. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. And, I know. I'm just teasing. Uh, our first stop was actually Boston. So we flew into there. And the first day, basically, was just travel. We had a layover in Baltimore. And now, I'm... Sorry. Um, with uh, your traveling and with the airlines, it was actually really smooth because no no more restrictions. Right. Yeah. No one was wearing masks. A handful yeah. of people wore them, but they're not required anymore. And uh, yeah, it was one of the smoother travel vacations I've had as far as airports went. So and it was uh, actually fun to fly again. Yeah. Yeah. So we get into Boston, it was late on a Monday afternoon, I think, and uh, checked into the hotel. The uh, woman at the front desk recommended a place. Todd wanted seafood. So she recommended a place, kind of, I think they called it the seaport area. Are you a big seafood eater? I like it, but I don't go out of my way for it. Okay, And I'm allergic to seafood, right. so... So we ended up finding a place called Yankee Kitchen, I think it was called. That's where we had dinner that night. And I was expecting it to be like a sports bar type place. But I got in there and it's one of these places where you order at the counter and then they bring it out to you. Okay. Yeah. And they had beer there. I had a white ale, I believe. And uh, the clam chowder was really good. I had some shrimp tacos, also really good. So yeah, I had a good time there. And then we just kind of walked around the seaport area. It was kind of like the waterfront in Seattle that we went okay. to. It was an area like that right right on the coast. So there would be little stores or shops. Mm -hmm. or okay, A lot of like upscale bars. We walked by some bars and we're like, no, we're not going in there. It was just like real uppity looking. Everyone was dressed real nice. Almost like. Yeah. I don't really want to compare it to this, but remember that that bar that we hated in San Fran where they seated us yeah, mm -hmm. against the, um, the, the, the wall. It was like these tiny, it's, it's like, it's like a little shelf we had. We were sitting yeah. Against. It was like yeah. a, like a shelf. It wasn't like a, a full on table where you can actually fit a bunch of plates. It's yeah. just like, Hey, sit here if you want a beer, uh -huh. you know? <laughs> yeah. We didn't like that yeah. place at all. Oh. 
And this play, these places were even maybe a little more upscale than that, the way people were dressed and stuff. And so okay. we were like, yeah, this isn't us. But we finally found... What would uh, that be? Like a, a yuppie? What, maybe. The, the, the term? They still yeah. use that term now? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But we finally found a craft beer place, and Todd actually found it. I almost walked right by. He's like, hey, you want to check this place out? This is right up your alley. Does Todd drink craft beer? Uh, not really. He's okay. he's more into doing shots, and he, oh, okay. he drinks Stella sometimes, but okay. yeah. He likes ciders, too. He drinks really? a lot of ciders, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, so we differ on that, but it was his idea, and he's like, hey, let's go in here. So we went in there and watched a little bit of hockey while we had a couple beers, and that was it. We were tired. It was a travel day. We barely slept the night before. Yeah, because you had... Yeah. What we would left that at be? like 5.30 in the morning, so... What would that be? Like a, almost a four-hour... How long of a flight would that be? Oh, it was like four and a half hours to okay. Baltimore. Then we had, were in that airport for like two hours. Yeah. And then hour and a half to Boston. So, Please. yeah. So we woke up at like three in the morning to get to the airport in time, you know? Wow. So we were pretty exhausted. The next day was actually the full day we had in Boston. And we went to Cheers for lunch. The actual bar that inspired the TV show. And, and you've uh, never been there. I'd never been there before. Okay. And uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, the outside looked just like the TV show with the stairs that go down. And, yeah, uh, the, the f- facade. The, right. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. But you got inside, it looked nothing like the TV show. It was a lot smaller. Which would be disappointing, really. It was you know? a little, but yeah, we, we sat down. It was a really small bar, and they had tables surrounding it. I later found out they have more seating in the back. We found that out when we went to the gift shop. But uh, I don't remember what I ate, but it was good. Food? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember being really impressed by the food there. It was good. Okay. Yeah. And then went to the gift shop. That's when I noticed more seating in the back. And, did you uh, buy anything? I did. I bought a magnet that I put on my fridge okay. and a mug. Okay. A beer mug. Yeah. Todd bought a couple of things, too. I can't remember what they were. And it, it just says... With the Cheers logo. and Right. Yeah, okay. mm-hmm. Then from there, we walked to Fenway Park, okay. which was about two miles. Which is was, the whole point, not the, actually the whole point of the trip, but it's in addition to is to get all these baseball yes. stadiums knocked out. Of, My bucket list and, is to yeah. see a game in every major league park. Yes. So Todd and I agreed on Boston for this trip. And yeah. Fenway, you've never been to yet? First time I was there, okay. yeah. And it's an iconic stadium. It's the second oldest stadium in the country right now, behind Wrigley Field. And uh, I was excited to see it because there's so much history. Uh, one stop, one pit stop on the way, we found a used record store, sold vinyl. Okay. So we we spent probably 45 minutes there looking around at stuff. Todd bought a few albums. Really? Yeah. What did he buy? I couldn't tell you. Offhand. Yeah, again. yeah. And uh and we actually got to Fenway way ahead of time because we went on the tour. They actually have tours of the stadium. And we toured Fenway Park and it was awesome. <laughs> I loved it. We had a really cool guide. He was funny, told great stories. Do they do they actually like like an in depth um, tour, um, for the most part, we didn't get to go to the locker rooms or anything because there was a game that day, so the mm-hmm. players were in there. I don't know if they take you to the locker rooms on when they're on the road or not because they do tours like pretty much every day there. But uh, they took us down to the lower level, told us some stories about the stadium. Then they took us to the upper level, told us more stories, and we got to take pictures. And then the end of it. We went up on top of the Green Monster, and if anyone doesn't watch baseball much, won't know what that is, but it's one of the most iconic, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, sights in all of baseball. It's the left field wall of Fenway Stadium, and it's the highest wall for a home run anywhere, and uh, it's painted green, so they call it the Green Monster. Yeah. And they took us to the top of that, so we got to take pictures up there, and that was really fun. I, I was kind of geeking out over it. <laughs> uh, free? No, I think it was thirty dollars. Okay, yeah, it wasn't too bad. And we hit a couple bars around Fenway too. There, 
two bars I think we hit right there. Okay. One of them is actually part of the stadium, but you're outside of it to get in, but it's a part of the stadium building. Okay. And that was kind of cool. And uh, the game, Red Sox beat the Angels 4 nothing. And uh, Spoiler alert. <laughs> And got to see two home runs. One of them went over the green monster. So that's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see a home run go over the green monster. So that was fun. That's cool. Yeah, great time. It was a great day. Weather great? It was a little bit chilly. Okay. We needed jackets. For but May. Yeah. Okay. We needed jackets. It was probably low 50s. It's not that bad. Yeah. No. It wasn't baseball weather, but it was. I didn't mind. Yeah. Yeah. And I got carded buying a beer at Fenway Park, which I thought was hilarious because I'm 54 years old and <laughs> they asked for my ID. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Happened in Atlanta, too, when I was there. I'll get to that later. But, yeah. Hmm. Some of these baseball stadiums, they card everybody. I was like, yeah, <laughs> I'm getting carded. I'm in my 50s. Hmm. Then from there, the, we flew to Baltimore the next day. And for my favorite weekend of the year, which is the M3 Music Festival. And b before you go mm -hmm. into the, the, the trip itself on this part, you want to explain what M3 is? Yeah, M3 is a music festival that most of the bands were 80s hair bands. <clears throat> and uh, that's my era. That's my favorite style of music. So... Uh, me and Todd go there every year. This is my third time, his fourth. They've been doing it, well, 13 of them, as my shirt says. It was the 13th time. I didn't even know about it for years, and I found out about it. Which like, you would have went. I would have been going from day one, yeah. Since day one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But at least I found out about it, and I am got to enjoy this last few years. So since they do it every year, is it the same bands every year? You get some repeat bands, but okay. it's not the same show every year, no. Okay. Every year, you'll probably get three or four that were there the previous year, but the rest of them will be new. Yeah, so like it, like if you go one year and then the next year after that, you're not going to get – like you're going to get something different. You're mm -hmm. not going to get – Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and while we – our first day in Baltimore <laughs> – we went to Camden, which is where the Baltimore Orioles play. We didn't do a tour, but we went to the game. Another very nice stadium. I liked it a lot. Uh, I kind of wish I would have seen Baltimore before Fenway, though, because Fenway was so awesome that Baltimore was a little bit of a disappointment in comparison. But I still had fun. Yeah, they played the Minnesota Twins, and uh, I honestly don't remember who won <laughs> i was just todd had you were a, drinking beer so much or it wasn't even yeah. that it was todd had a couple friends that lived in the area that joined us and we were all just joking around having fun just kind of half watching the game but uh making yeah. fun of any making fun of it any of the players like like we did that one time in san fran or not san fran um the, the angels yeah mm -hmm. uh oh Otari or Otani, yeah. O Otani, yeah. Remember that when <laughs> he struck out and all the Asian people around us were like, oh. oh. It's like, oh. <laughs> that was funny. That's yeah. a bummer. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, so that was our first day. Then we went to the. Actually, we did something. Uh, what day would that have been? Um, this would be Thursday. We went duck pin bowling, which. Baltimore is one of the only cities left that has this. It was popular many years ago. I did it as a kid growing up in Pittsburgh. We had a a bowling alley not too far from where I lived that had it, but they got rid of it probably before 1980. Okay. And Baltimore is one of the only cities left that has it, and it's just really odd. Br briefly, just it's. It's bowling, just like any other bowling, except the pins and the ball are much smaller. There's The pins okay. are probably half the size, and the balls are about the size of a shot put. They only weigh about okay. three or four pounds. Okay. And it's a lot harder because <laughs> everything's small. And would the uh, 
I know it's probably not called a, a lane, but like the, the the it's regulation lanes, just like regular bowling. Oh, okay. Same size. It's just the pins and ball are smaller, and it makes it much more difficult as a result. Okay. You know, Todd is a plus two hundred average bowler, but on this we were barely breaking a hundred. <clears throat> it's a hard. It's a much harder sport. Yeah. I. Yeah. Were you drinking what, I, while doing it? No. He wasn't. I think I had one. Okay. They did have a bar at the at the alley, and I, I think I got one. And then that night was the pre-party. They have an M3 pre-party. With, they bring in a bunch of bands to this bar. And it was a Mexican-themed bar, Cancun Cantina. And uh, the bands were pretty good, and they had a little area, outdoor patio area with sand to make it look like Cancun, I guess, you know. Okay. And... We sat out there for a while and had some drinks. And uh, my, our, one of the, my favorite things about M3 is the friends that I've made there. So many friends. Every year I make new friends there. And two of my favorite friends there are Kathy and Donna. And they joined us at the pre-party. So we partied with them the whole night. And uh, in fact, as we're doing this podcast right now, they are seeing one of the bands from that night back in Delaware, okay, where they're from. I was just seeing them on Facebook earlier tonight that they went to go. They're called uh, Kickin' Valentina, and they're actually playing Delaware tonight, and they're there. Interesting. So, okay. So, little shout-out to Kathy and Donna, my friends. And While you're rocking out with Kickin' Valentina, I'm doing this. <laughs> so, Yeah, n- not as exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a fun night. We had a really good time. Then Friday rolled around, and that was the first official day of M3. And it goes on for three days, but Friday is just at night. Okay. It's it's Friday night, and then it goes all day Saturday, all day Sunday. Like, when you say all day... Uh, They open the gates at, like, noon, and it goes to about 10 or 11 at night. So then, how many... How many bands would you say that you could see within that one eight or like, nine, Saturday? Probably have eight or nine Saturdays and Sundays. And then they and would have how many different sets? Like, Oh, like, it, one set each band. Really? The early bands will play maybe 35, 40 minutes, and then each okay. band gets a little bit longer as you move on. And then there's a break in between each one yeah. for different mm-hmm. setups. They do so, a set change, right. So what happens during the set change? Nothing. People. That's when people use the restroom or okay. go grab a beer or whatever. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Friday night there are four bands. But what me and Todd do is we get there super early and tailgate in the parking lot all day. And that's yeah. where we've made a lot of our friends. Is just partying with people out there. So how early do you tailgate? We got there about ten in the morning. Okay. Yeah. And we always joke around. You can't drink all day if you don't start in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, so yeah, yeah. We not? reunited I mean, with old friends, made some new friends, and had a blast. It was raining. Yeah, I remember you tell me that that it yeah, was th- this year dreary out, right? This year, the tailgating wasn't as fun because the weather was so bad. But they did bring a band to the parking lot this year that they hadn't had in, in the previous years I've been there. And and they they were just a cover band, but they were good. Okay. We enjoyed it. And what, what made him do that? Because it was raining or? No, that was okay. pre-planned and just happened. I don't know. They just, but uh, we did have a canopy that Donna brought and we had that and we were all huddled under there to keep dry, but it was still fun. And yeah. you're having, you're having beers mm-hmm. during the tailgate. Oh yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. And shots. Yeah. I had a bottle of fireball. Wow. So yeah, we were sharing shots with people and. Now, forgot to mention this before you start your whole story is with your two vacations, you had 77 beers. Wow. With, with yeah. two vacations. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that was between baseball and the concert and yeah. wherever else that you went. <coughs> but that's, that's a lot. Yeah. 77. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the first night of the concert, a uh, bang, that is actually from Maryland is called Kicks, K I I X. And they're huge in that area. So they always headline the first night and they're f- fun, really fun live band to see. We always have such a good time watching them. And 
at last year's M3, I was sitting next to a, a group of girls who I became very close friends with, and their seats happened to be two, two rows ahead of us this time. And because the attendance wasn't that great, there were some empty seats around, so we all hung out together. We all, they actually came up on our row this time, and then the next day we went down to their row, and there were enough empty seats, we made it work. And do you know why the, the ten, attendance was down? Uh, Any speculation? A or? lot of people online didn't like that it was Mother's Day weekend, so they weren't going for that reason. Okay. And last year's was 4th of July weekend, so a lot of people like to have barbecues and stuff. So okay. the last two years, the attendance was way down. I'm hoping that's not a trend that continues. But so when when do they announce the the dates for the next one? Usually right around Christmas. Okay. So. Yeah, but my the, the friends I mentioned, the girls, uh, there's Kim and her daughter Zoe, uh, and Brittany is Kim's sister, and then their best friend Tara. So those four girls were there, and we were all hanging out, and they decided we were going to go to a bar after the concert was over. So we did it. We went to a place called Union Jacks, kind of okay. a British-style pub. There was a cover band playing that we barely paid attention to, and we played darts. Had a good time. So Food there? Uh, they do serve food, but we didn't get any. But like British food? Since um, you said it's a British, I'm assuming British pub, it would be British yeah, food? Yeah. Um, I didn't see the menu, so I couldn't say for sure. Right. But yeah, so that was Friday. Saturday, we do tailgate early. We usually get there 9 or 10. They open the gates at noon. So a little bit of tailgating on Saturday. And uh, then all day long, we watch the shows. It was, yeah. M3 is just a fun time. So any you don't have to name all of them, but any bands to highlight? Too. Yeah, well, I remember I was disappointed because Extreme, who was one of my all-time favorites, they had to cancel. One of the members had COVID. Okay. So the but uh, a band called Enough's Enough that I also like a lot uh, filled in for them. So that was cool. You, and, you know, <clears throat> that way when <clears throat> people are listening to this, they can either go to Spotify and mm -hmm. check out their music. So. Yeah. Tom Kiefer headlined that night. He is the lead singer, <laughs> lead guitarist, and main songwriter for Cinderella. He does a solo thing now. And uh, he headlined, and he crushed it. It was amazing. And uh, who else was I heard? There was a band called uh, Leather Wolf who was really good. They might have played the next day. But, uh, yeah, I think they were the next day. Okay, so here's a question. Is there... Not just this year, but your previous years that you've been that you've been attending. Anybody that really sucks, like it's just horribly bad. Um, God, I hate to say this on a podcast to, to, to call someone out like that, but well, that's not. Um, I, I want to say that to to your liking or to your style. How about that? Um, I don't know. There was. One band called Black and Blue, who I just thought were boring. I was like watching their set. They had no stage presence. It was just okay. no energy. Uh, just kind of like, what are these guys doing up there, you know? And what, what was that? This like, would have like, been the first year I went. So we're okay. 2019. Oh, okay. Because I was yeah. going to say, if you can remember, was that like a a shared response like from the... Todd agreed with me. I didn't really okay. talk about it with anyone else. And there's actually a pretty popular hair band, and they're actually based here in Vegas called Slaughter. Okay. And I don't know what it is about them. They have the muddiest sound. It's like a bad mix. Okay. And everything's just loud, and you can't distinguish one song from the next. And they're good musicians. I actually know... One of the guys. It, it just probably has to, to do and with th th their sound, you know, the, the sound I, guys. Sometimes are. I think they have a horrible <laughs> sound guy, yeah. yeah. I've, I've seen them live probably six or seven times, and really only once they were really good. The other times, I'm just like, oh, this sounds terrible, you know? And it, I don't think it's their fault. Yeah. You know, but so those are like disappointing ones I've seen. Okay. Because <clears throat> the, the reason that I 
wanted to ask you that is that you know you, you go because you you want to see either the experience or people that or the the bands that you've seen previously but it can't all be a hundred percent fun right. and, you know there's got to be some disappointment sure yeah there was yeah. a band called zebra that played this year and they were really boring too i was okay. just like okay you know and uh the band that stole the show this year was skid row they got a brand new singer and i saw them twice before right before then they had their residency down at planet hollywood with the scorpions and me and Todd got to, to see this guy. His name's Eric Gronwall. He was in a band called Heat, and he just joined Skid Row a few months ago, and he is amazing. Blew my mind. And they stole the whole M3 show this year. They were by far the best. So hoping that they come back next year. Yeah, yeah. and I'm also going to see them next month. They're coming back to Vegas at Sunset Count, Station. Oh, okay. I was yeah. like, Count Vamped? Or, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I already got my ticket for that show. So, okay. yeah, they he breathed new life into Skid Row. They're just so good right now with that guy. Well, that's cool. Yeah. And we went to the after party, too. They have after parties at one of the hotels where the bands stay. And a lot of times the band members will come down and mingle. Um, we weren't crazy about the location this year. Last year's was way better. Different hotel. Okay. They stuck us in this banquet room, and it was really stuffy in there and we were like all shoulder to shoulder. It was, yeah. we didn't like it. Yeah. So we ducked out early and. Yeah. Um, cost like, uh, strictly just for the, for the, the concert itself. Yeah. Yeah. All three days. I want to say is a little over a hundred. Okay. Yeah. So it wasn't bad at all. Okay. And we had good seats. They got a pit area down at the bottom and then it's like an outdoor amphitheater has a roof, but no walls, you know, and then there's lawn seats in the back. Okay. People sit on the grass, but we were probably five or six rows out of the pit, so we got a good view, and the price was right. Yeah, for three days, that little bit of money. Yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah, so that was M three. We had a great time. Okay. Um, um, now, is there anything else to add to that trip? Uh, we stayed an extra day. Todd wanted to get a tattoo. And uh, I mentioned before my friends, Kathy and Donna, who we hung out with the whole weekend. Uh, that following day, Monday, was Kathy's birthday. So while Todd got a tattoo, I went and took her and Donna to lunch. And once again, it was a seafood place. It just happened to be <laughs> how it worked out. Shrimp tacos again? I don't even remember what I had. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we went duck pin bowling again. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. And then, then we flew home. Cool. Um, now, before you start your second vacation, yes, we yes. we need a refill. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I've I've been waiting. <laughs> yes. All right. So keep so, them occupied. I'll go get another beer. I will. Yeah. So we'll uh, get our second beer going. Uh, you brought three beers. Um, at least going to do two, of course, but um, maybe get to a third one. And um, all beers that we are trying have been from 595, our local place, who is just now celebrating a uh, five-year anniversary. And um, funny, five-year anniversary, when did we discover them? Uh, a few months before COVID, if, I don't, if I'm remembering no. right. 595? Yeah. We went there before COVID. I know that. Well, yeah, but I'm just saying. <clears throat> seems like maybe. Was it a whole it. year before that? Yeah, I, I'm thinking it's got to be at least a whole year. We went there before John Cleese. However long ago that was. Well, that was all one we of the have, first times. You know what? All we have to do is look on Untapped, right? Didn't we start Untapped right around the same time? I think we did. Yeah. So we'll just have to look at our very first check-in, really. Yeah. Yeah. But um. Your our second beer that we're going to highlight. It's another <laughs> double IPA called Energy Equals from Equilibrium Brewery, it looks like. Okay. And uh, very quickly, we are going to uh, 
do our untapped check-in once again. Take now, a picture. this is a double India pale ale, mm-hmm. uh, 8% APV. Okay. So uh, another 8% here going. And um, uh, I'm sorry, did you say the brewery already? Equilibrium. Equilibrium. Uh, yeah. Middletown, New York. Okay. Getting and, some East Coast uh, stuff going here. Again, this is our first brewery from this place. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, one of my favorite things about 595 is you can get beer to go to. They have two full coolers of... And you get a discount with a four-pack. Yeah. Yeah. Two two bucks off? Something like that, yeah. yeah. And uh, cans run between six and like $8 each, something, something like, like that. that yeah. yeah. So it's not a it's not a bad deal. No. Uh, energy equilibrium if I'm not mistaken Ooh, I like the nose and that's Einstein on the front right uh, uh, yeah yeah looks a little like uh, Mark Twain too actually yeah it does <laughs> um, energy equals yeah yeah um, yeah um, so this says um, mango, pineapple, citrus, and apricot. Okay. And so the nose, very faint something of those fruits. Yeah, it's not your yeah. typical IPA smell. Yeah. But how does it taste? Not bad. Now, I know it's a mixture of four different fruits. Yeah. I would say like a 375. That's exactly what I was thinking, yeah. Yeah. Not as good as the previous one, but this is still tasty. Yes. Uh, So, a taster. And the the other thing with these um, untapped check-ins is that you can always tag your friends that you're drinking with. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if you're a beer drinker, you can check out Untapped. Yeah, yeah. Keeps keeps track of everything you've drank, and yeah, you can oh, rate yeah. them, and yeah, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy the the app. Well, we use it all. The, mm-hmm. Yeah, we use it all the time. I. Check in for every beer I drink, yeah. So, I got Brewery Pioneer, level 35. That's what I had last time. And two times, level 15. Okay. Yeah. So For double IPAs? Is that what that yeah. means? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, two badges from one check-in, and I just toasted you. All okay. right. So, M3 was in May. Yes. And now you're... Well, you already had planned this trip before, like, M3, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you already had two trips kind of, like, already... Right. Yeah, going at the same time. And one thing I forgot to mention with Boston and Baltimore stadiums, they were stadiums number 12 and 13 in my quest to see a game at every stadium. Okay. So this next vacation I took, which was just a couple weeks ago, was all about baseball stadiums. Yeah, I, that that was a whole re- like right. you didn't you didn't have a it's concert. It's the only reason I went. I yeah. was trying to knock out stadiums, and I decided to take care of the southeast part of the country, all in one shot. Okay. And when I was looking at the schedule, I saw that the Pirates, who are my favorite team, were playing in Atlanta, and I thought, okay, well, if I'm going to go to Atlanta, I may as well do Tampa and Miami if I if they have home games at the same time. Mm-hmm. And it turns out they did in the week leading up to it. So my first stop was Miami. And uh, first day was just travel and a sports bar. And But again, yeah. smooth travel. Yeah, I flew Spirit, which isn't my favorite airline, but it went all right. Uh, yeah. busy. It was on time. It was a busy airport, too. The airport right? was packed, yeah. yeah. Uh, and we flown out on Saturdays before where it wasn't like that, but I got in there. I was like, wow, this place is jamming. So the... So briefly to sidetrack is that when you flew 
um, to M3 mm-hmm. fr- from out of Las Vegas, it wasn't really that busy, right? No, but it was also a very early flight. Yeah. So because I had visited the airport a week before you did. Yeah. And it was like a zombie apocalypse mm. almost. Like it was completely dead. Wow. Like. Yeah, not the case for me on a Saturday first, afternoon. First in line, first in line for a a, a ch- uh, check, uh, ticket check in and mm-hmm. luggage check in, <clears throat> and then you go upstairs to the security check. You're first yeah. in line. It was just like, is there any flights going on? Yeah. It, 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 just remarkable. I've never seen an airport yeah. that dead before. Hmm. But um, so busy airport, busy airport, and then. The flight was on time. The The flight itself, I had no problems with. But when we got to Miami, the the luggage carousel, we stood there at least 20 minutes before the first bag showed up. And that's that's crazy. They I've, had, wait that I've had that yeah. happen. I think we've even had it happen mm-hmm. before. And we're all just standing looking around saying, come on, what's going on here? It was at least 20 minutes. Could have been longer. And... Uh, yeah, but finally got it. My hotel was really close to the airport, so it was a cheap Uber. And uh, just went to a place called Old Tom's that was like a five-minute walk from my hotel. And they actually had a really good steak in that that place. I had a steak that night. Do you have yeah. steak often? Not a lot. Because, well, like, I had uh, uh, fl- I had filet mignon mm-hmm. at a, a place, what, about a month ago. And... I'll save it as a special occasion. Like I won't have steak every like every time you can go out where there's that option to have steak. Like I'll just I'll treat it as like a like a luxury almost, right. you know. So having that filet mignon was probably well, it would, it wasn't during COVID because of the lockdown. So I would say 3 or 4 years since I've had steak before this last time. Oh. Yeah. So and I don't I don't like to have steak all the time. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah, it's, I mean, again, to treat it like it's a luxury, like, mm-hmm. yeah, okay, this time, you know, yeah, it's like, just like a, I'd say maybe if if I had the opportunity to go out, maybe steak once, maybe twice a year. Yeah, probably yeah. for me too, yeah. Yeah. Not a lot of steaks. But it was at, for a, a sports bar, getting a steak, you don't expect something good. It was pretty good. That filet yeah. mignon that I had amazing mm-hmm. and they served it with amazing mashed potatoes like yeah. probably the best mashed, mashed potatoes I've ever had yeah but yeah so this was my first time in Miami and I kind of wanted to go to South Beach but I was such limited time flew in Saturday the baseball game Sunday and I was flying out Monday morning so I was like okay the baseball game is in the afternoon I still got some daylight time. I can maybe hit the beach after the game. And ultimately, I decided not to do that. Um, Regret it? A little. Because, okay. you know, the only time I've ever been to that city and I didn't see a whole lot of it because I was so limited on time. But uh, I liked the stadium a lot. Went down. It was kind of a weird location. It was like in the middle of a residential area. A lot of houses and stuff around there. And uh, okay. it was might be a good thing for these people who live there because a lot of people were charging for parking right there in their front lawns. There's a, when we went to um, Dodger Stadium yeah. when we're going up that hill, there was people charging for parking. And we had this discussion where we were saying yeah. that mm-hmm. you could actually make some bank for every home game every weekend or, well, the weekdays too. <laughs> but you can... Yeah. Especially if you have like a long driveway where you could fit like two or yeah. three cars, you can make some s- serious money during baseball and, games. And some of them had these concrete strips in their front lawn for the tires, so they don't mess up their lawn. People would actually yeah drive right onto these strips and and park there. Yeah, I took an Uber, so I didn't have to worry about that. But yeah, um, I took a whole lap. I always take a lap around the stadiums when I go to a new stadium just to see it and there wasn't much around a lot of stadiums have lots of sports bars and things so almost like the the dodger stadium where there's just nothing yeah there's nothing at dodger stadium yeah, yeah. but oh, like there's not san francisco had sports bars in the area and like san diego has a ton of them 
I mean, even beer options was terrible for right. Dodgers. Yeah, don't get me started on Dodger Stadium. Well, yeah, I hate no, that place. Yeah. <laughs> I'm never going back. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Well, neither am I. I mean, yeah. But uh, Miami's was cool. Uh, nothing around it, but when you got inside the stadium, it was pretty nice. Indoor stadium because it's Florida and it's super hot. And it was air conditioned in there. It was nice. I did a lap around the concourse. And, and this uh, is when. When we had texted uh, each other and you were telling me about the weather, 90% humidity. Yeah, it was hot out yeah. there. I was sweating just walking around the stadium at a leisurely pace. I wasn't even walking fast. You know, I was just taking my time and yeah, felt like I needed a shower. Oh. It was it was pretty disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite things inside the stadium, it's out in the center field concourse. They have a thing called the Bobblehead Museum tons of bobbleheads from every baseball team and even stuff outside of baseball it was really oh, okay cool. so i'm saying it just isn't yeah. strictly baseball and it's um, it, how, they're all behind glass cases and you walk how, all the way around it and it, how, how it, many would you say <sighs> it, i would say in the neighborhood of 500 okay just yeah. a guesstimation and uh, i collect bobbleheads so i got a big kick out yeah, of that but you're so. not as Big of a collector that you once were, right? Years got I sold of most of them, yeah. yeah. But I kept my Pittsburgh sports ones. Okay. So I got like Willie Stargell, Mary Lemieux, stuff like that. Because you were even collecting just kind of random ones? Yeah, too? I was doing movie ones. And, okay. you know, I remember I had like a Johnny Depp Pirates of the Caribbean you one. You should have kept that one. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I had Jay and Silent Bob. I had Napoleon Dynamite, stuff like that. But I sold all that stuff a long time ago. I just keep my sports ones now. But uh, the game was cool. The Giants beat the Marlins 4-1. to one. And when it was over, I walked outside the stadium, and I was like, do I want to catch an Uber to South Beach? Late I, at night? It wasn't. No, it was an afternoon game. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So okay. this was like not even 5 o'clock yet. But and we uh, weekend? It was a Sunday. Mm. So I was like... It might be kind of rough. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I wanted... I've heard bad things about South Beach, too, that it's not the safest place, so... Even even during the day. Yeah, so I'm like, okay. I knew of a couple of breweries that were down there that I wanted to check out, but at the same time, I was just like... I was by myself. If I had people with me, I might have done it. Okay. But being that I was solo on this whole trip, I was just like, do I want to go down there by myself? So I found a little uh, tap room right across the street. It was like the from only bar. Across the street from the, from the, the stadium. stadium. Yeah. And it was the only bar I saw. So I went in there, and it was super nice. And I checked in on Yelp and got a 50% off for four flights. That's right. Okay, I remember yeah. you when you were texting me about mm-hmm. that. And uh, Yeah. And to the, to the people that aren't beer connoisseurs like us, a flight is like four tasters. Sometimes they're five. Good, but yeah. good size tasters. Yeah, they're like seven or eight not, ounces. Yeah. Yeah. You're actually talking like. So yeah, not gold. much different than this. Yeah. 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 So I spent about two hours there. Had my. Had all those flights. Got to try a bunch of new beers. Yeah, you did. Yeah. You. Yeah. And one of them, it was a Hef that I liked so much that I ordered a full size one afterwards. So yeah. Yeah. You, it was delicious. I, I think. Here, let me, let me check really quick. Because I think I actually highlight, highlighted that one. Okay. Um, was that... Or no, that's the 595. Uh, no, wait a minute. Let me see here really quick. Oh, maybe I didn't write it down. Okay. I thought I did. Um, but I remember seeing that one. <coughs> but yeah, you, you you tried some pretty good beers while in uh, my, uh, yeah. Florida. Mm-hmm. So. And I finished the night off going back to that same sports bar from the night before. Got something to eat again. And that was Miami. That was my brief stay in that city. Well, you went to Hooters, right? That was later in Tampa. Oh, Tampa. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, what, yeah it's still Miami. Forgot, so the next day I, I flew to Tampa. Tampa. Very short flight. I was on American Airlines that time. And uh, smooth as can be. Really? Yeah. Okay. And... One thing I like to do, and you know this, I collect refrigerator magnets 
And anytime I go to a city I haven't been before, I make sure I buy a magnet. Okay. So when I got off the plane in Tampa, I was walking towards to pick up my luggage, and there was a gift shop. I was like, I'm going to grab my magnet now. So I went in and grabbed the magnet for Tampa, and that took maybe two minutes. And then I went to the luggage carousel, and my bag was already there <laughs> that fast. Wow. I was like, American, all right. <laughs> I, I think I've had maybe one maybe one flight where it was extremely fast yeah and then others you know normal or whatever um actually isn't it the, the burbank airport where you could because it's not that busy yeah and you could actually be in and out pretty mm-hmm. quick yeah yeah so. i couldn't believe how fast it was i mean it was right there wow. immediately and i was like sweet and uh I actually stayed in Clearwater. To anyone not familiar with that area, you got Tampa, St. Pete, and Clearwater. It's all the same area, just different names. But it's all right there on the, the Tampa Bay area. And that first night, I went to the original Hooters. Okay. Now, now, have you have you been to other Hooters? Many. Okay. It's. I would not be in Las Vegas today if it wasn't for Hooters. I used to go to one in Ohio, and I made a couple of really good friends there that I met there. We became like inseparable friends for years, and it was one of those friends. His name's Brian. He hooked me up with a place to stay in Vegas when I moved here. Okay. If I had never met him, I never would have ended up in Las Vegas, and I met him at Hooters. So I, could, I owe my living in Las Vegas to Hooters, <laughs> of all places. Yeah. And okay. this was the very first Hooters ever built in Clearwater, Florida. Kind of like the original. Kind of like when people visit Seattle to go to the original, the, the original Starbucks. Starbucks yeah. yeah. And I've seen, I didn't go to it, but I've driven past the original Wendy's in Columbus, Ohio, where my brother lives. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, so, so, like the Starbucks that's in Seattle, mm-hmm. huge line no matter what day that you go. Mm-hmm. So, was that a Not big really. line? Okay. It wasn't busy at all. I was there. This was a Monday night. Okay. Yeah. And I'd been to this location way back in 1996 with the said friends when we went down there, Brian and Doug. And I didn't like it too much back then. It was kind of dark and dank, and it, we weren't crazy about the place. But because it was only two miles from my hotel, and I was hungry, and I was like, okay, I'll just go there. And I got there, and it was totally different. And I later found out, talking to other people sitting at the bar, that I don't know exactly how long ago it was, but some drunk drove their car into the place and okay. did massive damage. So they remodeled the whole place. They gave him an excuse. Yeah. So they should actually be thanking that yeah. person. I'm sure they used the insurance money to do oh, it, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it was like a whole different place, and I liked it. And. You know, got attractive waitresses running around in skimpy outfits. Okay, and, hey, yeah. <laughs> now, now wait a minute. Now, we're guys. Yeah. Okay. So, and I remember we had a discussion uh, through uh, through text, but um, you said like two were almost tens or? Uh, two of them were outstanding. Okay. Yeah, there were two girls behind the bar that were really cute that were, were waiting on me. They weren't the tens. There was one, it was a light-skinned black girl. That was as pretty as anyone I've ever seen. And she had a body to match. And another really pretty blonde girl walking around. They were the ones that were like really stood out to me. I was like, wow. There were two other ones that were like, eh. Yeah. And the rest were fairly attractive. Okay. Yeah. So at least something to look at for for your taste. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I had the buffalo shrimp, which... The only place I've ever seen that has that. It's basically shrimp, and they bread it like like they yeah. would wings, and put the the wing sauce on it. Well, I'm sure there's other yeah. places that do that. I'm sure there are, but that's the only place I've ever seen that had it, and it's you mean really the, good. I mean, there's no place in Vegas that does. That? I don't know. I've never seen okay. it. <laughs> Maybe you have. I don't know. You don't eat seafood. Well, no, but, I don't yeah. eat seafood, but. But uh, yeah, so I had a good time at Hooters. There was a bunch of guys at the bar I struck up conversations with. and Talking about boobs? 
No, not no, really. Okay, no, I'm just here. Actually, we were talking about baseball a lot because that's why I was there was to see baseball stadiums. But uh, and when I left, you know, I took an Uber. I was Uber and everywhere because I didn't rent cars. And called for my Uber. I didn't even realize it till I stepped outside. It was like a monsoon downpour, okay. which, from what I understand, Florida gets a lot. And first experience I had with it, I had to like run to my Uber because it was coming down that hard and I was already drenched. But yeah, that was Monday night. Tuesday was baseball day, but that wasn't until night. So I went for lunch at Clearwater Beach, a place called the Palm Pavilion. And I really liked it, right? It's a nice little beach bar. They had the back wall opened up so you could see onto the beach and the, okay. the water in the background and everything. You had a picture of that, right? That, yeah. yeah. I remember seeing a picture of that. And uh, I had my lunch there. I think it was just a burger and fries. Typical bar burger. It was good. Nothing great. And really cool bartenders. I was laughing and joking with them. And then I took a walk on the beach, and it was so humid, I couldn't enjoy it. Yeah. And I wasn't dressed to get in the water or anything, you know. I had a baseball jersey on and <laughs> jeans. <laughs> It was just too hot and humid, so I'm I got off the beach. you wore jeans to Florida. I had some shorts, but not... I, I own, like, two pairs of shorts and couldn't wear them every day. So, yeah. you know, so I wore jeans on certain days. So I got off the beach, and I was walking around. I found another bar. Can't remember the name. And I just went in there because it was so hot and humid out there. I was just looking to get it indoors. Where there's some air conditioning and they didn't have air conditioning as it turned out but they did have fans and the bartender pointed a fan right at me so that was kind of nice it was a nice little place but it, the funny part was you know anyone that knows me knows i love the pittsburgh steelers and i get in there and i start looking around and there's baltimore ravens the steelers biggest rival they got banners and Tenants and posters of the Ravens everywhere. And I realized I'd stumbled into a Ravens bar. <laughs> it wasn't a game day. It's not even football season. But I was just like, oh, what did I just do? Yep. So I got a, it was pretty funny though. And I was joking with the bartender about it. I was like, hey, I'm a Steelers fan, you know. <laughs> that was kind of fun. And then from there, oh, I want to add this in just as a little side note. When I was taking my, uber to clearwater beach i saw this massive church one of the biggest churches i've ever seen and i was looking at it thinking wow that thing is huge i later found out that is from the church of scientology okay scientologists are taking over clearwater my uber driver later was telling me about it they're buying up all the property in clearwater and the town's about to go bankrupt because of it because Technically, it's a religion. They are tax exempt. So they're buying up all this property. So all this money the town would normally make on property taxes, they're losing. And they're about to go bankrupt because of the Scientologists. I wonder what the reason is for that. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. But just a little side note. I thought well, I they, they got to have like some type of a agenda to, Maybe. Want, to want to do that. You right. Know? Hmm. Like why clear water? Yeah. You know? I mean, it's a beautiful area. I love it there, but hmm. if it wasn't so dang humid, you know. But then I went to the baseball game from there, and there's a bar. Actually, the, the guys at Hooters that I was talking to recommended a place called Ferg's, <coughs> F-E-R-G, apostrophe S. And it's like a huge sports bar, uh, unbelievably big. It, they had several bars in different areas all around, plus tables, and it was packed. I got there probably two hours before the game started. Yeah, and I mean, it's got to be packed with a game day. Going. Yeah, and most of them were St. Louis Cardinals fans who the Rays were playing that night. And I was like, wow, this is like going to be a home game for the Cardinals, even though it's in Tampa. Wow. But it was a nice, it was a really cool sports bar. I didn't eat there because I had already eaten lunch at the Palm Pavilion. Uh, had a couple beers there, and it was nice. And then it was a short walk to the stadium. Once again, not much around it. I did a lap like I always do. Not much. It's a dome stadium, which you don't really see anymore. It's like one of the only ones left. And I had, every time I read 
about this stadium, people have negative things to say about it. It wasn't that bad. Okay. Indoors, so I like that. It was nice and comfortable inside. Um, it was better than Dodger Stadium by far. Okay, better than Oakland Stadium by far. So don't. Now you really can't judge it since you haven't been to every stadium. But don't right. you think that everything is better than the Dodger Stadium? <sighs> Yeah, Dodger <laughs> Stadium is the bottom on my list yeah. of of the sixteen stadiums I've been to. Oh. Yeah, Dodger Stadium is at the very bottom. Yeah, by, yeah. place is a dump. I hate it. <laughs> yeah, I hate the and, fans. And yeah. I'm sure adding the the gondola is going to improve. Yeah, it. it's a joke. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. And as soon as I walked in, there was like a bar right inside. It was like a, a sit down bar, and so I sat down and had a beer before the game started. It was, it was well, really nice. Had. A few beers, not just one. Yeah, I might have had more than one. I can't remember. I, I think you did. <laughs> I, I yeah. I was I was checking your your check ins before the podcast. I, I think you had actually a few. Okay. At that localized, you know, place. And like the coolest part about the game, and I was right that there were way more Cardinals fans than Rays fans there. They would, when the Cardinals were doing well, the cheering was loud. When the Rays, not so much. And but, you know, the Tampa Bay Lightning were playing in the conference finals I that same that night. I hate that name. What the Lightning? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> don't, don't the hockey want... team? Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I don't know. So I was thinking mm-hmm. they were more concerned about hockey that night than they were about baseball, and that's why not a lot of Rays fans were there. But I could be wrong. I don't know. But it was like a home game for the Cardinals because way more Cardinals fans in there. And uh, it went to extra innings. The Cardinals took the lead in the top of the 10th. And then in the bottom of the 10th, the Rays hit a walk-off home run and shut the Cardinals fans up real fast. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> and yeah. that's the first time of all the baseball games I've ever gone to, the first time I saw a walk-off home run. So that was cool. And You know, you know almost like where Gonzaga – where like yeah. it, it shuts them up <laughs> uh, right away after the loss. It's like oh yeah, mm-hmm. and from where I was sitting, I knew as soon as the ba- the ball went off the bat that it had the distance, but it was right on the right field line, and the only question was was a fair foul, and it hit the foul pole, which is a the foul pole is a kind of a misleading name because it's actually fair. If it hits the pole, mm-hmm. it's fair. So it hit the foul pole and bounced back, a home run. And I turned around and looked at all these Cardinals fans, and they're just like, they were just like shocked. Like, Gonzaga, <laughs> Gonzaga lost? It's like, because oh. it's like, it was two outs and two strikes <laughs> when he hit this ball, too. So they were one strike away from winning the game, and the guy hits a bomb. So That's awesome. And I'm not a fan of the Cardinals. As a Pirates fan, the Cardinals are in the same division, so... I was rooting against the Cardinals, obviously. So yeah. I got pretty excited. A walk off homer. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I had a great time with that. Yeah. That's good. So that was Tampa. Then I went to Atlanta and I spent four days there. And Atlanta, I had a lot of fun in Atlanta. Uh, it was still humid, but not nearly like Florida was. Yeah. And, uh, I got there late on a Wednesday afternoon, checked into my hotel, which was less than a mile from the stadium. And that first night, I didn't have tickets for a game. I was going the next day and three three days of Pirates versus Braves. I decided to walk over to see where the stadium was so I know where I was going. And I found it with no trouble. And I had heard about an area called the Battery that is right next to the stadium, which is tons of little sports bars and gift shops and restaurants and stuff. I didn't see it. I'm like looking around. I'm like, where is this place? I was on the opposite side. Okay. So I went over there and I eventually found it. And I found a really cool little craft beer bar and had a couple drinks. And I'm checking my phone. I knew there was a game that night, not against the Pirates. They were playing the Oakland A's, and there was tons of people around going to the game. And uh, I went on one of my apps called Game Time, where you can pretty much buy a ticket 
all the way up till the game. Spur of the moment. Yeah. Man. And I found a really cheap nosebleed seat. And I was like, I'm here. Why not? And we've yeah. done that with San Francisco. We did that in Frisco. Yeah. We yeah. Did. Where we were just like, screw it. Let's just go. Mm-hmm. You know, where we decided the day of the game we were going. Yeah. Because we were at uh, the Palomino Club. Pa- Palomino, mm-hmm. which is like what? Less than. Five? It wasn't very far away. Yeah. yeah. And it was like, well, you're this close. Why not? Let's mm-hmm. just go to a game. You know? Yeah. So. And it worked out for both of us because they were it happened to be the giveaway was a replica World Series ring That's because right. the Braves won the World Series last year. And so I got that and we together sold it on eBay. Yeah. I put it on my eBay yeah. store yeah. and it, um, that day that you told me that you had received it, mm-hmm. I was actually, because we, what did we sell the, the, the few years ago? That when we went to the game, yeah, it, it was, was a Dodgers a, hoodie, a Dodgers yeah. hoodie, and we sold it that night. Yeah, because uh-huh. we had listed it and made a nice profit. Yeah, well, we did, especially since it was free. But we still <laughs> sold it for a, yeah. Did we sell it for like thirty five, forty bucks, something like that? Like forty bucks, yeah. yeah. And so when you had told me that you had got it, there was only one person that started putting the ring up, uh-huh. and then like the day later, everybody started putting the rings up. Mm-hmm. And it was the the ring was selling between seventy for a buy now, and then some people were doing an auction, and I think the highest auction went for one hundred and fifty. And it's yeah, it's crazy that like you can just sell these giveaways, yeah. and there's collectors out there that will put the money oh, out. Yeah. For it. yeah. Yeah, and so that's why when we go to uh, Anaheim next year, I'm I'm hoping we can get like a, a good yeah giveaway day. Okay, so here was a question I was going to ask you. Mm-hmm. I know we're really, I mean, we're really wanting a Pirates weekend with the Angels. Yeah. What would you rather have, an a, a Pirates Angel weekend, or because you can see ahead of time of what the giveaways are going to be. Mm-hmm. Or like a really good giveaway, like something where we could bank on it. It would offset the cost of the trip. Yeah, yeah. that's what <laughs> so, I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we could do that. Well, I'm just saying, like, what, like, I mean, I I would rather have a, a pirates. Weekend. I would like to see my pirates. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but what if there's that? It would depend on what the giveaway was yeah, and what yeah. we could make off of it. Yeah. yeah. I actually looked this year at all the giveaways, and it was one thing out of however many giveaways that they had where it was like profitable but not spectacular yeah you you know so i think we're just probably gonna well hoping that we can have a a pirates with a giveaway where it's a an average profitable thing to sell yeah you, you know but yeah uh 70 70 bucks for that ring yeah yeah nice yeah and Sold it what? You three? sold it immediately. Yeah. Well, like three much. or four days later. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I love the Atlanta stadium. That was my favorite stadium of the three on that trip. Not as good as Fenway, but it's it's up there. Of the 16 I've been to now, I might say top five. Really nice. Okay. It's brand new. They just opened it like a couple years ago, and it's a really nice stadium. I yeah. So you're lot. still going to see it as pristine and clean and yeah yeah nice area it wasn't it was actually out in the suburbs it's not in downtown atlanta so i felt safe walking around you know well that's good yeah, yeah. and uh one of the things i was thinking about doing in atlanta was i found out that the college football hall of fame is in atlanta and i thought that's something i would like to see because i love football so I started researching it before I left, and I found out they have something called the City Pass. And what it is, it was like $68, I think. And you get to go to five places with, for that $68. And one of them was the College Football Hall of Fame. One was called the World of Coca-Cola. Uh, there's an aquarium, a zoo, and a natural history museum. It's like, okay, I'm going to do these things. So I bought that. And I actually already ended up doing three of them. 
because all in the same day. I did okay. the aquarium, World of Coca Cola, and the College Football Hall of Fame. Okay, so th- this is a question I wanted to ask you. Yeah. And it was only because when my friend visited uh, a few weeks ago, he had went to an aquarium, and evidently, this is a thing now with aquariums. They have live mermaids swimming in tanks. I didn't see that. So no. That they have hot women in mermaid outfits just swimming around in these big tanks, mm. and evidently, it's uh, an attraction now huh. for. No, I didn't see aquariums. that here. So I was asking my friend, I was like, okay, you go to an aquarium, school field trip, whatever, for educational purposes. It's like, so what's the educational purpose of having a hot woman dressed in as a mermaid just swimming around? It's like, this isn't like a Las Vegas thing, you know, where, you know, it's like, so what's the edu... Like, the average person that would probably go to an aquarium or like 12 year olds 13 year olds so why have that you know it's, it's so odd, yeah you know and it's a thing like a lot of cities have that mm-hmm. so i was i was always i've been meaning to ask you if if that aquarium that you went to had that did not no okay but it was cool saw sharks and dolphins and okay. all the typical stuff you but, see but no yeah. no hot mermaids no, no. hot mermaids no <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't stay long. They had some shows that you could go to, but I wasn't really interested. Like a, the sea lion and otter type stuff you see at SeaWorld. They had stuff like that going on. Okay. I didn't want to do that. And right next door is the world of Coca-Cola. I went there, and they basically give you the history of how Coca-Cola became the brand that it is today. Yeah. And at the end, you get to sample all kinds of different flavors from around the world. So... They had something like that in Las Vegas here, mm-hmm. where it was, um, I forgot wh- where it was. It was somewhere on the Strip, and I, I went to it many, many mm-hmm. years ago. And, yeah, you get to try, like, Coca-Cola from India. and Yeah. Yeah, like. Yeah, all, I had some from, like, Zimbabwe. And yeah. All and, kinds of and countries like, around the world. Some of them were, like, off-putting. Yeah. Like, to them, it might be. Okay, or t- I thought like, I sampled a bunch because you're on your own. They they put you in this room. Oh yeah, and That's, it's like in the Vegas did that. Yeah, it's like in the convenience stores where it's do it yourself. You know, and yeah. you just fill your little cup up and take a taste of it. And they were all pretty good, I gotta say. There, when I did the one in Vegas, there was a couple that were so off putting. It'd really? be like okay, be mixing like cough syrup with. Drano cleaner or something. Oh, geez. Yeah. 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 Like, there was some that were really off-putting. Yeah. Like, like, why some would... Some of them tasted nothing like I expected it to, but they were still good. Yeah, but th- there are some, like, why would mm-hmm. someone want to drink this? Yeah. You know? Yeah, it was... And, oh, yeah. And one of the things of the tour was you, they put you in this room, and they don't let you stand against the one wall, and they start talking about how sought after the formula for coke is it's like super secret no one knows the formula and next thing you know the wall moves away and there's this huge vault and that's supposedly that's where the actual formula is kept it was like 20 foot tall they don't have it was huge and they said that's really where they keep the formula so it's like al capone's yeah yeah it's it's not (laughs) but i couldn't believe how big this thing was i mean it's a formula how big can it be you know it's like you don't yeah. need a twenty foot vault for this. It's yeah. probably like on a, a post it note. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. I mean, come on. It's not like the Declaration of Independence. You know, it's uh-huh. like, come on now. It's like So from there I went across the street to Centennial Olympic Park, which is infamous for the bomb that went off during the ninety six Olympics. Okay. And you know, I've seen T V shows and movies about it and it looked nothing like what they showed there it's a uh, it's not even that big but uh i did find a little memorial plaque for richard joel he was the one that was discovered the bomb and was actually accused the patsy he was accused of actually yeah. setting the bomb up and they were wrong it turned out to be that wacko that was on the run for all those years can't think of his name right now but but uh richard joel has since passed away 
and oh, yeah. they uh, <clears throat> seven eight years maybe. Yeah, it's been a while, yeah. and they have a plaque, basically calling him a hero. And there's a fountain now where the bomb actually went off, and there's a little memorial in the fountain. It was, okay, that is the exact spot where the bomb went off. So I got to see all that. That was kind of cool. Okay, and then I went to the College Football Hall of Fame, and as a football fan, I loved it. It was fantastic. It was great. Cool. And they give you a little lanyard to wear in there, and. At, before you actually go inside, they you go to this computer and you enter all your information and they, your favorite college team. And you hold your lanyard up and there's like a little barcode there. So there's spots throughout there where you hold your lanyard up for the thing and your favorite team will pop up and all kinds of information will come up about okay. that. So that was cool. And, and you kept it, of course. Yes, I have the lanyard. Yeah, it's, I collect the lanyards too. I so do too, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so... But I got to see the Heisman Trophy and all kinds of other trophies they had on display there. And, yeah, it was really nice. I spent about two hours there. They had one uh, specific little little uh, attraction, I guess you would call it, where you can kick a field goal. They have a little makeshift little football field there. Yeah. I didn't do it because I didn't want to embarrass myself. But <laughs> I was watching other people do it, and most of them were missing – Horribly, miserably probably, yeah. yeah a few people connected but yeah but yeah so that was georgia atlanta i saw three pirates versus braves games braves won all three yeah, yeah. <laughs> braves yeah. were in a hot streak at that point huge yeah. winning streak but the highlight was my last game it was saturday afternoon game and i caught a foul ball and was able to give it to a little boy that was sitting in my row I made his day. It was his ninth birthday. Oh, you didn't tell me that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It just happened to be his birthday. He happened to be sitting in my row. I gave him the ball, and I've never seen a kid so happy in my life. That that made my whole trip. Well, wait, how old would you say? He He's nine. nine. He turned nine, yeah. I mean, come on. I mean, that's... Yeah. To, to a nine-year... Well, I mean, to maybe any kid. It was, it's like, it's kind of funny deal. because when the game first started, his dad was sitting there with him, and he's like keep your eyes open the ball can get hit over here because we were pretty close to the field and i turned to him and i said if i catch the ball i'm going to give it to you so they disappeared though it was a family of four they they were gone for like two innings i don't know what they were doing restroom buying snacks whatever i caught the ball while they were gone okay they come back i showed them the ball and the dad was like what <laughs> yeah yeah see what happens when you yeah. go off and you know yeah. so yeah that was the highlight of my whole trip was giving that kid the baseball should have been like yeah you see what you missed <laughs> could have, you could have had guess he you won't leave anyway, next yeah. time <laughs> so that was a lot of fun me. i just i it made my whole trip being able to do that for that kid and that was it i went home the next day <laughs> And uh, yeah, that I mean, that that was a trip right there in itself. Is yeah, what th three different? Three. I different saw four games in Atlanta. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, locations. I mean, you know, you. I mean, you, you did a lot just yeah. within a mm -hmm. short period of time. Oh yeah, it was yeah. a one week trip. Yeah, saw six baseball games in one week, and plus all the other stuff I mentioned. So, yeah. yeah. Um. Now, <coughs> there is one. One beer, which you had at Tru Truist Park? Truist Park. That's the Braves. Which I've never heard before. And uh, maybe you uh, recognize it when I okay. say it. Summer Shandy. Oh, yeah. Because you, you gave it a, a 3.25. And I'm like, what is a Summer Shandy? And it's a beer mixed with soda juice or ginger ginger ale. Yeah. I'm like, I've never heard of that before. And this it, one that it you wasn't had, your typical beer, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah, and this one that you had was mixed with like a, a lemonade flavor. Yeah, but it was mm -hmm. still technically like a, a wheat beer. I, I guess it was. It, it you definitely tasted the lemonade flavor. Yeah, yeah. But so, and I've never had a a shandy. Yeah, I never. I I didn't even know there was that classification. Yeah, of a, that was yeah. news to me too. Yeah, and because that was your first one. I, I was just trying different beers yeah. that I'd never had before. Well, so yeah. 
seven, 77 beers, but you had quite a few that were repeats, re- yeah. repeats, mm-hmm. doubles or whatever. But you actually had a, a nice mix between M3 and Florida. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you had a, a nice range of beers. You, you did. Well, East Coast breweries, so we don't get a lot of those beers out here, yeah. you know? There was a few that you had that were either available or the brewery was available here mm-hmm. or uh, where we could get it either here or California or whatever. You know? Right. But yeah. Um, so yeah, and that's probably it for your trips this year, right? Yeah. I Well, Todd and I are going to go see Queen Drake a, a couple times, one in California, one in Arizona. That's not till November. Yeah. But I mean, as far as um, like... And I'm going to trips. Phoenix to see the Motley Crue Def Leppard Stadium Tour. Okay. That's in August. But in and as out. far as like long-term yeah. vacations, yeah, yeah cause, I'm done for the year. Yeah, because like we're doing Anaheim next year. Yeah. And you're doing M3 again next uh, year. Definitely doing M3 yeah. next year, yes. But yeah, so that that was your big trip for, for, for fulfillment. Yeah. Yeah. Of uh, of the year, mm-hmm. and uh, you got in how many baseball stadiums? I did Four, five baseball five, stadiums five. this year. Yeah, so up to sixteen. That's not fate. Knocking I'm off more than halfway. Yeah, not y- yeah. you knocked off five in one year, right? Yeah, yeah, a month apart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean that's that's pretty good, right? Yeah. There. And um, so just um, just to briefly mention that uh, when you came back um, separately. We went to five nine five on their five year anniversary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and your your main purpose of when you went was to try that one collaboration beer. Yeah, it was uh, Metal Blade Records, made by Revision Brewery. Yeah, which is uh, yeah. an American IPA. Yeah, six point five APV mm-hmm. on that, and uh, Revision Brewing and Sparks which Nevada. I love Revision Brewery. Yeah, They're, it's one of my favorites. And yeah, because we have it. Pretty quite often at yeah, five. They got five. some good IPAs. Yeah. Uh, this specific one, I was a little disappointed you, in. You gave it a three out of five. Yeah, and it's and it was supposed to have mango, guava, and tangerine. Yeah, it was a little on the bland side. So on um, paper, it would probably sound good. Yeah, but yeah. And the funny part was, I was sitting next to the guy who made the beer, created the beer, whatever. He was like, it was his idea. And I kind of had to lie to him. <laughs> oh, like, you actually did talk to him? Oh, yeah. We talked for quite a while. I was like, yeah, you did a great job with this beer. And I'm on the inside, I'm oh, like, yeah. my God. Why don't you just give him a hand job, too, while you're at it? <laughs> Jesus. I felt bad for the guy. I didn't want to, you no, know, I wasn't going to be rude. <laughs> just teasing. Um, so then a beer that we try, again, separately, but uh, the same beer that we tried, Clockweed Orange. Yeah. I liked it more than you did. Um, it was all right. It's a, a, a wheat beer Hefenweizen, mm-hmm. 5.5 APV, so just your standard. Right. Yeah, uh, by uh, Mojave Brewing in uh, Henderson, Nevada. Yeah. There's some breweries that we need to try in Henderson. We do. Yeah, which we haven't tried yet. Yeah. But to the physical location that, you know, mm-hmm. that is. And then um, one more beer that you tried at 595. Um because you love blondes, uh, yeah. I mean, beer wise, yeah. and yeah, women, yeah, too. yeah. <laughs> um, but and I'm not a big fan of blonde beers. I'm, I'm just not. I don't yeah. know. I st- still have yet to find like a, a really good blonde beer. I've had some that I loved, but yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> this one, uh, the uh, P- uh, Pandan Monium, Pandan Monium. Yeah, it's like yes. a it's like supposed to be like pandemonium but yeah yeah but there's like a play on words hyphen in the middle yeah and uh it's by astronomy l works which we love their mm-hmm. beers too they're great brewery yeah yeah and local uh, again henderson which mm-hmm. we still have not visited their location yeah, we yet. need to get out there yeah we do that uh, we, need, we to, need to plan that when we get yeah. off the air here yeah <laughs> God, we need to do that just what yeah an afternoon yeah, I mean, I don't know how close they are to, to one another. They're but. pretty close, from what I understand. Okay, I mean, to do what? I mean, it has to be like a mini vacation or something because I can't yeah. do it in one day. I can't. No, and we probably have to stay up 
so yeah out there because that's a expensive uber out to henderson so oh yeah yeah um but that uh pandemonium beer was a uh five percent and you liked it you gave it a 4.25 yeah. out of five so yeah that was really good um mango and surprisingly mango and coconut Mm-hmm. And you don't like coconut. I so. don't, but I do. I couldn't taste it. Yeah, it was probably yeah. not it, it mixed in. I actually, so well. I could, but it was very subtle. Okay, I, I could handle it. Yeah, so I'm saying mixed in so well. You, yeah. you didn't. You could probably give you the beer and go. Not even mm-hmm. mention coconut. You know. Yeah, you'd be like, yeah, beer's great. It's like, ah, ha, ha, there's something that <laughs> you hate in this. Yeah, you know, it's like when parents do that with vegetables, and mm-hmm. you know. They give it like, you know, there was, you know, Brussels sprouts mixed in. Right. Was, you know, so, yeah. So, yeah, so that was your spring slash, what, was it summer when you went to Florida, uh, technically? Technically still spring, even when I went to Florida and okay, Georgia. So, yeah, it was so. your little mega spring vacation. Yeah. You know, for two uh and That's two it for the vacations. year. I'm running out of PTO time. <laughs> yeah. So you got you have to be well I money build it back up. Money wise too, you have to behave. Oh yeah. 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 They were expensive. Yeah. I, I spent some money. So I gotta be a good oh, boy yeah. for the rest of the year. <laughs> All right. And then like I said, we we have Anaheim. Yeah. So we can do our, our beers out there. Yeah. So yeah. By the time we do that next year I'll be ready to oh, go. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Well I'm ready to go now, but <laughs> I wish I could. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wish I could yeah. too. I just don't have the time. So, God, yeah, that's it. Um, All right. I know we have a third beer, but yeah, we'll save it for next time. Yeah, save it next yeah. time. And um, hopefully, it'll be sooner than later. Yeah. But, yeah. But those of you who watched, thank you. We yeah. appreciate you watching us. And yeah. Another good podcast. And um, hit the like button and subscribe to your Bosco's Toy Box channel. Yeah. And. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The podcast and whenever I get around to it, my, my toy videos. But right. Yeah. So um, we will see you next time. All right. And uh, thank you for listening or watching. Yes. And, um, and again, until next time.